Helpless and helpless, afraid and alone Groping in darkness, my purpose unknown Searching for meaning, enslaved by For our first hymn, hymn number 553 Hymn number 553, Sweet By and By Please stand and join me for the first verse There's a land that is fair up for the service. Thank you, please be seated for our Sunday school offering. Lord, thank you for this day and time year that you've given us to come spend time with people who are like-minded and who love you, Lord. Please help us this day. Please help the preaching this morning and this evening, Lord, as may everything be done be your, to your honor and to your glory in your name. Amen. Please be seated. Stand with me for one more hymn during the Sunday School Hour, hymn number 106. Hymn number 106, praise him, praise him. and blood and 
Good morning. Good morning. Oh, goodness gracious. Ah, indeed. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I, I don't know about you, but I was kind of a little bit nervous this morning. I woke up and there was water falling out of the sky. You know, like, what is this? You know, sort of like, um, who was it? Someone. Uh, I'm trying to think now. Someone years ago they had been living in a particularly dry place and they came back to the States or wherever and it, they woke up one morning and it was raining and their little girl panicked because she had never, she couldn't remember seeing rain fall out of the sky, water fall out of the sky, you know, kind of thing. It's not quite that bad for us, but it is kind of unusual. It seems like we, we have had a bit of a dry spell. doesn't seem like we have had one and uh, it is nice to have rain here on the 11th of June, 2023. Good morning to our folks at home. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, our crowd's a little bit slightly sparse today. Maybe we'll fill in here as we get going. But I appreciate each and every one of you making the effort to be here. And it's good to, to see each one of you. I want to take a little bit of a departure from normal. We're going to interrupt our normally scheduled uh, Sunday school class today for a, a special uh, sidebar. Um, and I, uh, I am both excited and sober-minded today, and I really am excited because of, I've, I've, got, I've received some communications uh, in the last couple days from Brother James and Sister Grace Lova in Myanmar. We go ahead and put the, start the slideshow up, Brother Gray, please. And uh, there we are. And I want to take a moment, maybe the whole class, I'm not sure, but take a moment to give you a, a Myanmar missionary moment from uh, and about, from and about James and Grace Lova there in uh, uh, Hope Baptist Church. North Dagon, Yangon, which is the city, the capital, well, not the capital anymore, but the largest city in Myanmar. And the north end of that is North Dagon, and that's where they live and work with Hope Baptist Church there in Myanmar, formerly called Burma. It's an interesting country that it was called Burma because that's the primary ethnic group there, the Burmese, but not the only one. There's, as many nations in Asia are, there are just multitudes of uh, of of ethnic minorities and groups, dialects. Yes, sir? Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Thank you, though. Uh, but uh, at any rate, uh, uh, Brother Tim and, and first of all, uh, Sister Michelle w lived there. Brother Tim started going to Myanmar. He, he met Brother James Lova through uh, an online contact with other missionary, other believers, and started visiting there in like 20... 10 or something like that. I think 2011. I went, I've been there with him a couple of times before he moved there. And that's where he and Michelle were living and ministering. Uh, in 2019, um, I was blessed to go with the church sent pastor and Tracy to Asia. We went first of all to uh, China to visit the Branscombe family who were there uh, in Jamin and Adam accompanied us, joined our merry band, and accompanied us on into Myanmar. And uh, um, Myanmar has an interesting history. Uh, how many of you have heard of Adoniram Judson, the missionary from American Missionary, right? Uh, he, he went there a couple hundred years ago and started, you know, uh, planted a ministry there. And because of his long and hard-won success, other American missionaries followed him. And they kind of gradually spread throughout the country. And in fact, um, let me just, I don't even remember. <laughs> I threw this thing together this morning, so I'm not really sure what I got here. But uh, did I do that? Well, let me just go ahead and say this. They have established Hope Baptist Church, and that's one of the services just last month. Coming out of COVID, you know, they had, we had COVID. We had a military coup there in February of 21. So over two years ago now, the military reasserted itself and took over the country and have been really brutalizing the, the people. The military are sort of in a, an ethnic class of themselves. They tend to uh, pass it on from military leadership from generation to generation within different families and things like that. So the, in most cases, you, when you have a military in a country, they are somewhat loath to persecute their own people because it's their people normally. You know, I mean... How would you, would like it, you know, I, I don't think our national, our guardsmen here would, would like to come and persecute us because, you know, we are their community, we are their home. 
uh, typically what they'll do is they'll take people from here and send them to Pennsylvania to persecute Pennsylvanians and bring Pennsylvanians into Michigan to persecute Michigan, Michi Michiganiers. But uh, Michiganians, not Michiganders, we're not geese, we're Michiganians. But, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that was given to us, I think, by uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln, uh, insulted one of our senators by calling him a Michigander to call him a goose. But at any rate, um, where was I going with all that mess? Anyway, uh, they, it, so, but they do persecute. The military is persecuting the entire country and is, is quite brutal. They're, they're, they, they bomb with, and strafe with aircraft. They go in with soldiers, and it really is a mess that they're making of their country. Now, uh, Hope Baptist Church, though, is a beacon of light and of hope there in North Dagon, in Yangon, and this was one of the services. Uh, so they've come out of the COVID pandemic. They've come out. They're still in the midst of the military uh, dictatorship, and they've been blessed to start reestablishing and conducting churches uh, services. And, and all the while, Brother James has a network. Uh, he and Brother Tim developed a network and, and nurtured and, and maintained a network of pastors, uh, also in partnership with another missionary, American missionary, Chris Murray, who had a number of contacts. So they kind of folded their contacts together and worked in, in partnership, if you will, to train these pastors. Now, uh, I've already started telling you that we had American missionaries go in there back in the 1800s, and they did establish a very solid footprint for the gospel, if you will, in a country that's like 85 to 89 percent Buddhist. So we've had relative, I mean, it's like, wow, it should be a whole lot more than that, you would think. But um, at any rate, there is a church. There is a church which is part of the body of Christ that lives and survives even today in Myanmar. Now, a lot of the things, though, is that over the, literally the centuries, uh, some of the doctrine has waned. And when you talk about they were under military dictatorship for like 60 years before they threw them off, well, they didn't throw them off. They kind of stepped back for a, little, for a few years, and now they've reestablished themselves, their dictatorship. But in that oppression of, of decades of oppression, um, their doctrine kind of waned. They're, they still had Bible colleges. Brother James went to a Bible college. I'll tell you more about that in just a moment. But uh, even he laments the fact that they, they are a doctrinally weak country. And we went in there, Brother Tim started going in there, and I got to go with him on a couple of trips and, and that sort of thing. And he started teaching these folks. First of all, we entered to, to teach them right division. And then some of the guys didn't understand what we're talking about when we were referring to the King James Bible. What do you mean? What, 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 and so we had to back up and teach them the King James Bible because most of the other so-called Bibles will mess up 2 Timothy 2.15 rightly dividing the word of truth. They, they usually call it, you know, properly handling or something like that. And so they do away with the doctrine of right division. And so we would have, we had to kind of back up and we had, we were doing conferences really with just a handful of pastors, pretty much from the local area there in Yangon. And Brother James started getting a hold of the King James Bible rightly divided. And he started putting the word out, you know, word just worked out through the network. And he was just very grieved about the lack of sound doctrine in his country. He was thankful that they had the gospel, they had the presence of Christ, but they just didn't really have the Bible, and they much less rightly divided. And, of course, they have the Judson Bible, which is, is good, and that's the one that, that they will still refer to in, in Burmese. But uh, even that has to be you know, somewhat, I'll say, uh, corrected, clarified by use of the King James Bible. And, it was, and, it, and they've readily accepted that as, they, as that truth has been introduced to them, so we, such that... We have a network of pastors who are just eager and routinely receiving training from Brother Tim online now and also from Brother James on Paul's ministry and rightly dividing the word of truth, such that in, 20, in November of 2019, uh, we went there with, with uh, Pastor and Tracy and Brother Adam and uh, Tim, primarily Pastor, of course, Brother Tim, Brother Adam, and I did a uh, a Bible conference there where they pulled in all these pastors that could come, and there were scores of them actually, 
some that had completed one year of, of study through the ministry of Brother Tim, and you know, they call it Midland, Bi <laughs> Mid Midland Baptist Insti Bible Institute, you know, in BBI. And so they were coming in, some with one year of, uh, under their belt, some with two, some with three, some with four years of, of training from Brother Tim and Brother James to get a uh, three day, two or three days of intense, and I do mean intense, training from Pastor Payne. And he would get up and he would go, you will not be surprised to hear this, he would go for like three hours at a time, nonstop, you know. And then we would kind of, quote, unquote, take a break, and, and one of us slower guys would, would step up and teach for a little bit. And then, you know, we, we had to, in between his three-hour sessions, and so <clears throat> they were just soaking it up. They loved it. And um, we came home, and, and Pastor, I think, was pretty pumped about that, some of the most meaningful overseas ministries they had. He's done that in the Philippines. <clears throat> he did a little bit of that, <clears throat> excuse me, in uh, he preached in Adam's church there in China, Adam and Candace's church. Um, obviously, we couldn't have quite the same stuff that we had uh, there in Myanmar. But at any rate, came back, and then uh, COVID hit, and then the coup hit, and it just became, it really became kind of, if you will, a little bit of just a touch, a taste of hell on earth. And, and, and to this day, that, that does tend to persist. But they're pressing on, and Brother James has continued with his networking with the pastors, and, the, and they do uh, training. They still gather in, come in uh, like uh, every two weeks or three weeks or whatever, and he will teach them, and he'll get a, a feed in from Brother Tim, and he'll, Brother Tim will teach them uh, over the Internet that way. And, things are, and they're conducting services at Hope Baptist Church. So let me just show you this. Now, um, actually, <clears throat> Brother James here, is not Burmese. In fact, I asked him one time, I said, when they changed, the government changed the name of the country from Burma to Myanmar, you know, a lot of people, well, the military dictatorship did that, so it's got to be bad. But I asked Brother James, I said, well, they changed the name of your country. Do you resent that? And he says, no. He says, I'm not Burmese. I'm Chin. <laughs> so I'd rather be Myanmar than Burma because that speaks more to all of us, it's more inclusive of their, of their, and representative, if you will, of their mixed and very diverse, ethnically diverse uh, culture. So uh, he is Chen, but uh, Yangon is part of, is Burmese, basically. And he's, he is essentially a missionary to the Burmese outside of his state of, of Chen. Let me just see, okay, here's Burma. <clears throat> Burma, well, it was Burma, here's Myanmar, and you can see now here's Chin, now down here is Yangon, that's the largest, the, they, they built a new capital up north of there, and you know, that's, that's the military for you, we're, we're going to presume to impose our will on the country, and we're going to make a different, a new capital, uh, but uh, Yangon is still the largest city, it, it's really the, the big place in, uh, in the country. Now, Chen, where they're from, where they are both from, is up here. Now, interestingly enough, um, <laughs> as sometimes happens, I've known a few people here in the States that met each other either online or in Bible college or something, and come to find out they grew up in towns right next to each other, you know, maybe graduated from high school the same year or something like that, but they had to go to Bible college or had to go somewhere else to meet each other. And, well, that's kind of a James and Grace story. And uh, uh, they are actually, James is from, well, let's go here. They're from this area here. Now, here is where, this is the capital of Chin State, and that's where, uh, let me get his name here, brother. Arthur Carson and his wife, Laura, came to Hakka, the Chin State capital, on 15 March, 1899, and they planted, if you will, uh, the flag for Christ in Hakka, here, right there. Now, right about up here is the area that James and Grace are from. Grace is from a village that's right on the border with India, 
Bangladesh is down here and India is up here. Mizoram state of India is up here. And uh, Grace is from a, a, um, a village right on the border and James is from a village that is seven miles from hers. But they both went to Bible college. There was The Bible college they went to had two campuses. One was, was up here uh, where they're from, but the other one they had down in Yangon, and that's where they went down there to go to Bible college. That one has since closed, and everything's up in Chen now. But they had to go all the way down to Yangon to meet each other, even though they grew up seven miles from each other. And so that's where they've been, and they are considered, and he stayed there to, be, to do an outreach to the, to the Burmese, to the Buddhist Burmese. And interestingly enough, Chen State, they say Chen State, of course, it's, it is the poorest state in Myanmar, uh, not that well populated, but they say that 90% of the Chen people profess to be Christians. And they said that when it's church time, the whole state would kind of close down, the, the streets would get kind of quiet until the church would church time would be dismissed and people would come out of the churches and activity would pick back up. So it's quite an amazing thing to think about that. We're, I've seen one uh, little town village in the Philippines that was very uh, uh, predominantly faithful Christians, and uh, it's just kind of a bizarre thing. We don't really see too much of that even here in the States because we've become so secular these days. You know, It's unconstitutional almost to be a Christian anymore here, it seems. But... Um, Apart from the fact that their doctrinal standards and knowledge have, have, have waned, it's still quite well known to be a quote-unquote Christian state. And they have been quite persecuted because of that. But, okay, if, if you've got 90% of your populations claiming to be believers, then it makes sense that you'd say, okay, there may be greater needs elsewhere in the country for folks to go preach the Bible. So they've been missionaries to the Buddhist down here for several years now, for about uh, 20 years or so, uh, and they've been faithfully serving. Grace is one of the sweetest, dearest sisters uh, I know, and I'm blessed to know a number of you ladies that are very dear, sweet sisters. But... Um, I love this lady, and it's, 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 I wish I could show you, I had time to show you some pictures of her and Tracy and, and the things that we got to do with them, and if Tracy were here, she'd be nodding her head to what a sweet, dear lady uh, Grace Lova is. Uh, she's had her health issues a few years back. They removed a, a, a big old tumor from her in, uh, abdomen, and she's got diabetes. She's got health issues, and... Uh, recently had to have surgery, and I want to read to you an update. This is after the most recent surgery that she's had. Brother James is feeding her some soup there. Uh, this is the next thing she's got to have taken care of. There's a tumor there growing in her back that needs to be taken care of. And just to, just to let you see that right there, let me read to you. Um, this update from them. I appreciate your patience and bearing with me on this today because uh, as I read this, I read, Regina read this with me last night and she said, this is, this is very good. We, you know, folks need to hear about this. So this is from June 9th. This is an update on her uh, from Brother James. He says, first of all, we do give thanks to God for his grace and his salvation. We do thank you for your prayers and support. Please continually hold grace in your prayers as she is recovering from her recent hysterectomy, hysterectomy surgery. She had cancer there, and they had to remove that. It took about four hours of surgery to do that. And she is waiting for both receiving radiation therapy and the next surgery for the tumor on her back. Right now, the surgical wound and stitches get slow to get healed. <laughs> Please, and of course, she's diabetic, so they heal slower anyway, you know. Please pray that the pain would be drastically reduced and for her speedy recovery. And, and it has been, she has been, you know, prayers have been answered. She has been making great progress. Today we went to see specialist doctor for radiation therapy at Mae Kwong Treasure Cancer Center. 
Grace should need to start radiation therapy from June 19th. I'm reading this straight as he wrote it. The, the wording's a little bit awkward. I mean, this is not his primary language, but he, he speaks English a lot better than I speak Chin or Burmese, you know what I mean? Grace should need to start radiation therapy from June 19th, Monday, due to the tumor, which is said the, the stage two cancer. She would, be, she would be receiving daily radiation for five weeks, Monday through Friday, 25 times. We therefore are really needing your prayers, both for grace and for our financial situations. As we don't have any health insurance in Myanmar, your prayer is greatly appreciated for this concern. Due to our situation, there are only three hospitals, Mekong Treasure Hospital, Grand Hanta International Hospital, and Pinlan Hospital, owned by the military cronies, available to do radiation therapy. In addition, the price for radiation is extremely expensive. The cost for one radiation is $108, so it's times 25, right? In this stressful time in Myanmar, we do really covet and need your prayers for grace and for our financial situation. Thank you so much for your prayers and support. These all we have been going through with winning and obtaining the great testimonies of the grace, the goodness, and the guidance of God, which is always sufficient for us and overflowing to us. Praise the Lord. It's greatly amazing that whenever we have been sharing our present testimonies to others, we do see that every single of our testimony becomes both a great blessing and deep comfort to others, as well as a refreshing encouragement to them who have been going through the same kinds or other turmoils in this chaotic situation in Myanmar. We do pray that all these should cause and bring the glory of God. Praise the Lord. Please do pray for us that we would seize and take every single opportunity to share our testimonies and the word of God to many people in Myanmar. Thank you so much. So that's an update, and that kind of uh, is, uh, th those are not platitudes. Those are not, those, that's the way they live. It's like, okay, we're living for God. You know, I, I said Sunday evening, your life is your ministry, and your ministry is your life. Live for the glory of God and the good of others, and they do that. That's what they do. Uh, that's grace. That's our dear sister. Now, uh, Brother Tim had asked that they, that they put uh, Grace's testimony in writing to put it on Facebook and everything like that to talk about the need and the ministry going on there. So I'm going to read that to you next. And this is uh, the testimony of Grace. She says, I was born and grown up in a good Christian family. She's from Chen, like I said, very predominantly Christian. That's why they, you know, she, she and James both grew up in Christian family. Um, since I was a kid, I went to Sunday school and learned a lot about the Bible stories. And as I read this, you might think, wow, that sounds a lot like a testimony you'd hear in the States, you know, and maybe some of us in here would have a, a similar testimony. Totally different country, totally different culture, language, and all that, but yet the gospel of the grace of God still working the same there as it works here. How about that, huh? Okay, she says, when I learned some stories from the Bible, I was thinking myself, that I was better than them. <laughs> and I was also thinking of myself, and th okay, this is a lady that's being brought up in a Christian home, right? I was thinking of myself, let's see, I was also thinking of myself that God loved me because I am good enough to be loved. I was thinking of myself that Jesus loved me more than others because I was better than them. I was quite obedient to my parents and to my teachers. I was proud of my, of my self-righteousness. Everyone boasted of me as I was a good girl. No one told me that I was a sinner. Hmm. Actually, I was not free from sins, lying to my parents and others. Whenever I did wrongs, I was in, miser I was in miser miserable, I was in misery to cover up my wrong. And trying hard to cover up my many lying, mistakes, and wrongdoings, I was quite tired and miserable. <laughs> uh, I remember our, our daughter, Mary Beth, used to come wake her mama up in the middle of the night crying and, and because she had done something that, that hadn't gotten taken care of and so she was having trouble sleeping and she would come and weeping and, 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 her, and Regina would very patiently say, okay, what's bothering you? And she would keep digging until Mary Beth got it out, they'd pray, you know, and then she'd go back to bed and go to sleep, you know. Anyway, uh, Grace was playing that game with her life too. It was in 1996 when I was 15 years old, I was deeply touched by the preaching of one pastor, Pastor Thuong, at the youth camp at our village. I went to the youth camp, actually not to hear the preaching, but to help the staffs preparing coffees because I thought I didn't need to hear the preaching. 
I was thinking that preaching was for those bad guys, not for me. <laughs> At the first night, the pastor preached the gospel from Ecclesiastes 7.20, Romans 3.10-24, through and 6.23. I was deeply touched and convicted by the word of God, especially, quote, there is none righteous, no, not one. And, quote, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I was deeply accepting myself that I am a sinner who would surely face the wages of sin, which is death. I was in trouble. I was in a great miserable situation. I was greatly willing to know how to receive the, quote, gift of God. As the preacher added, the Bible says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I can't wait. I can't wait any single second to hear and show me how to receive the greatest gift of all. I promptly, this is in the service now, pastor's preaching. She said, I promptly raised my hands, paused the pastor's preaching, and asked, preacher, please tell me how to receive the gift of God, which is eternal life. <laughs> Can you imagine somebody saying, Pastor Payne, stop, tell me, how do, what is this you're talking about? How can I get this, how can I have this saved, you know? Uh, even as a lost person, she was pretty bold, wouldn't you say? Everyone at the meeting, uh, camp meeting, kept silent and looking at me with surprisingly amazement because most of them didn't believe that I might need to ask this question while some others thought that I was brave enough to bother the preacher's preaching. The preacher asked me to read Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. I read it, for by grace, through faith, not of yourself, to give to God, not of works. I did read this verse quite often in Sunday school, but at that time, the verses deeply touched my heart. He also asked me to read some couple of verses from the Bible. Everything I read was very clear to me. Short to say, no delaying, I believed and accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. And after I read Romans 10, 8 through 11, whatsoever, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed, then I confessed with my mouth that Lord Jesus in front of the people, and shall believe in mine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I received the free gift. I praise God, I am saved. Now I'm having the joy of the salvation, and on a daily basis, I'm confident on the grace of God, which is always sufficient to me. This is a lady just got out of a four-hour surgery, right? I do have the praises and thanks to God and His sufficient grace, even when I have been walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Besides the two operation surgeries I got for delivering my two kids due to my health issues, she had cesarean deliveries, kidneys, problems, high blood pressure, diabetes, in 2008 and 2013, I got some other operation surgeries. In July 2012, I got surgery for my left wrist broken. It's happened due to falling from the bamboo house where we were having outreach preaching with my husband, uh, James. In August 2015, I victoriously went through the major surgery for the massive tumor which attached in, was attached in my uh, abdomen. Praise God, it was benign. Now I'm recovering from hysterectomy surgery which was successfully done on May 23rd. And I am also waiting for having radiation therapy for the uterus tumor which is said to uh, be stage two cancer. I would be, rece be receiving daily radiation therapy for five weeks, 25 times, starting from June 19th. And again, I am also waiting to get another surgery for the golf, size, golf ball size tumor on my back shoulder. I would really appreciate your continuing prayers for me. Please do pray that these all would turn again to the great testimonies that would bring the glory of God into the many, many people's lives. Thank you so much. Very often the question, why me? beats and burdens me, but why not me brings me healing and, and, and burns my heart for giving praises to God's sufficient grace. Praise the Lord. Blessings, Grace Lova. Instead of why me, why not me? <laughs> why not me? Blessings, Grace Lova. So, you know, there we are. That's her. And I think that's all I got. Yep, that's it. Um, I just wanted to share that with you and make a plea for your prayers and to try to make, you know, we talk about these folks and, and honestly, I understand. Uh, I've traveled a lot and I know the difference between having actually traveled to a place and met people face to face and to uh, uh, feel the climate there, to feel the heat, the humidity, to smell the smells, to taste the foods that they eat, to feel to feel their handshakes, to feel their hugs. You know, it's kind of like the difference between our watching uh, our services online and um, our being here in person. 
you, you understand that this is uh, exponentially better, a better experience, a more solid experience than, I mean, I'm glad we, I'm glad we can watch online, yes, but, and I'm glad you guys are watching online, but it's simply not the same. And so I could show you pictures, even we could go um, uh, FaceTime, I could have them and we could see them, but it's not the same as having been there. Well, uh, I can't take you there, but, and I haven't really even done the FaceTime thing. That would be a lot better. Haven't even shown you the pictures of Jim and Tracy's uh, trip there, but I hope that by showing you these few pictures and reading you these testimonies, and, and we, need to, we just need to be praying. Hopefully, it's, it's a bit more real for you who we're talking about when we say James and Grace Lova and me and Ma. And understand this. I, I showed you the map of Chen State. They've been pounded. Uh, there was a pastor that was, he was trying to go put out a fire that the bombs had started in his community, and the, he was shot dead by the soldiers that had come in on foot. So the persecution there is quite real. In fact, James's brother and his family and their mother had to uh, flee the, the country, and they crossed over into uh, India, into Mizoram. They say that actually Bangladesh and Mizoram and Chin are, are really one ethnic group and that they themselves, that would be better as a country right there, but the British kind of divided things up the way they wanted to when they, you know, had the colonies there. But they've gone over into India, and that's where they are, and they're, they're stuck there in a village. Uh, they're doing well, all things considered. They're not fearful of the soldiers coming in and shooting them there. Uh, so the, the country is really war-torn from within. The, the fam families are separated. Um, it, it's just not a good thing. But yet, showed you pictures of the church service. They're, still, they're winning Buddhists to Christ. They're faithful, they're serving the Lord, they're um, encouraging, they're, they're enc encouraging themselves and encouraging others to hear the gospel and to, and to see the grace of God. You know, um, Barnabas saw the grace of God at Antioch and he went and got Paul and show, kept brought him down to show it to him. I'm telling you, we're seeing the grace of God here. That's what we've been looking at, what we've been talking about. That is the grace of God. And it's, it's, uh, it's our privilege, it's our blessing to be able to partner with that, that activity. And, that, and, and believe you me, in fact, Jay might even be watching now because I told him I wanted this inf some information and what I was going to be doing here this morning. And they do try to watch, they try to watch our services as they can because they love Pastor Pank and they love his preaching and his teaching. They love us. They love Midland Baptist Church. They pray for us as a church. He's got Hope Baptist Church praying for Midland Baptist Church. They love us, and they appreciate us, and, uh, and we, we we're just blessed and privileged, I believe, um, by God's grace, to partner with them and to do our best to hold them up in prayer. Of course, we, we, do, we support them financially as well, <coughs> but <coughs> our, fin <coughs> <excuse me. coughs> our financial resources are, of course, limited but our prayer resources are not. Only we. We limit our prayer resources. We do that. We choose whether to pray for someone or not. And I, and I understand that. I'm, I mean, I'm not, I'm not scolding us at all. I'm just saying, I mean, I have to have a list. <laughs> and if I don't have it written down, I mean, it's like, okay, God, what's the most pressing need right now? Poop, and something will pop up. And, oh, yeah, I remember that. I can pray for that now, you know. I'm terrible. I'm terrible. But I want to be good at it. I want to do right by my brethren and my God to pray. So um, I would encourage you, as I'm encouraging myself now, let's be more diligent. Let's be prayer warriors. Let's, let's fight back. We've been talking about the power of God, and we were looking at the power of God that's gone down through three different channel, main channels. He's given it down to, through man, he's given it down through Satan, and he gives it down through himself. We looked at some of the man stuff. We see the power of, of man being abused there in Myanmar. But we, and we also have been looking at the power of, that God has given to Satan that he abuses. And, 
I'm here to tell you that Buddhism business and a lot of other stuff that's there, that's the power of Satan working there. And we've got to fight back. We've got to push back against that. We've got people who are on the front lines pushing back. We need to push with them. We need to pray for them. Father, we do thank you for this time that we've had to take a moment and look at the ministry in Myanmar and that we're blessed and privileged to be a part of. Thank you, Father, for allowing that. And I ask you to bless Brother James and especially Sister Grace, Lord, and bless them financially. Thank you for the care that they're able, she's able to get. Lord, help that to be effective. We pray for the radiations, radiation treatment therapy to, to be uh, administered and, and to succeed. We pray for the upcoming surgery that she needs to get that tumor out of her back. We pray that it would be benign. We just pray for Hope Baptist Church. We pray for those pastors and those outreach churches that are out there, Lord, that you would protect them and, 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 and uh, sustain them and use them really for your glory. We pray for souls to get saved and the saints to be established for the glory of Christ. In his name we pray. Thank you. Thank you so much for your attention and your patience this morning.